My name is Fifi Young, and I'm a software engineer here at Boston Dynamics. I work on the stretch behavior team, which is responsible for coordinating the high-level actions of the stretch robot. When I was a kid, I was always really interested in more of the technology and STEM side, so I really liked math. I was into computers. I stumbled into a LEGO robotics program at my school, and I just loved it and decided to continue studying that in school. I went to the University of Pennsylvania, where I studied computer science and robotics. One of my favorite classes was algorithms. I found algorithms to be really interesting because it took some common problems that you might have thought of before, such as sorting a deck of cards, but you learn a lot of different ways to do it that are more optimized. That level of optimization and critical thinking was so interesting to me. It's actually why I continued studying computer science and it definitely carries over into robotics where you have to do lots of critical thinking and collaboration on a daily basis. I'm a software engineer here at Boston Dynamics on the Stretch Behavior Team. The Behavior Team is responsible for making high-level coordination decisions about how we move Stretch around the warehouse and help it do its daily tasks, such as unloading trucks. Stretch is a multi-purpose case handling robot for warehouse applications. It is meant to tackle many different applications in the warehouse that involve moving cases. We write software that moves the robot and makes high-level decisions about what the robot should do next. My average day at Boston Dynamics starts with coming in and saying hello to all of my teammates. My days will usually include some amount of design reviews, so making sure that people across the team are integrating properly with us, as well as uh, talking with teammates and making sure that they are not blocked and also just bouncing ideas off of each other in a very collaborative way. Why doesn't Stretch have legs? That's a really great question. Everyone kind of associates Boston Dynamics with these amazing legged robots capable of doing amazing things. A lot of those other robots were made to be more general purpose and could handle some really difficult environments, such as walking through rubble, going upstairs. Stretch was our first purpose-built robot, which was specifically made for the case handling application. As such, we understand the environments that it's going to operate in really well. It's in a warehouse, there aren't as many stairs, there's probably not going to be any debris <laughs> or rubble around. Therefore, it is much more practical for us to use wheels for this robot. How fast does Stretch go? Stretch, when it's driving, goes at about 1.6 meters per second, which is like a brisk walk. For the arm motion, it can actually dynamically adjust its arm speed depending on different factors, such as how far it is inside the truck, that means it's further away from people, or even depending on characteristics of the box. For example, for heavier boxes, we'll move more slowly so that we reduce the chance of dropping the box. How far can Stretch reach? Its vertical reach is about 10 feet, which is roughly uh, the height of a basketball hoop. Its horizontal reach is about six and a half feet, which if we're sticking with the NBA analogy is about the height of Steph Curry. <laughs> what things can Stretch pick up and what can't it pick up? As you see behind me, it is really good at picking boxes. It can pick boxes that are up to 50 pounds and it can even handle some more dented boxes or weirdly shaped boxes. However, it is a suction based robot, which means it's going to have trouble picking up things that are less suctionable. For example, probably not a bag of oranges. I wouldn't want it to try to pick up my pet cactus, but even a basketball might be difficult just because of the rounded surface. So things that are flat and suctionable are where you're gonna have the most success. How does Stretch see? Stretch has a number of different sensors that allow it to understand the world around it. It has a perception mass, which includes some RGB cameras. Those are more like the typical cameras that you have on your phone. But it also has some other camera suites, such as the LiDAR around the base, which allows it to see anomalies or approaching people like footsteps. And it also has um, some cameras in the gripper, which allow it to see more things that it wouldn't normally be able to see with the mask, such as the ceiling. What kind of real world considerations does the team need to keep in mind when designing Stretch's behaviors? Going from the lab to the real world is really difficult. There's a lot of things that happen that you don't anticipate. One of the ones that we deal with really well is dropping boxes. That's always going to happen and we have to make sure that we can recover from that well. So we do have some drop box recovery behaviors. We also have to deal with damaged boxes, whether they're crushed or maybe they're wet. Sometimes they're so wet that they can even rip apart while you're holding them. And we try to do the best that we can with that by intelligently designing our motions. There are also weirdly shaped boxes. Imagine trying to suction a pizza box shape from head on is pretty difficult for anyone to do. 
And then we also have to design intuitive safety and user experience. So we have a LiDAR field that goes around the work cell to make sure that people don't get too close to stretch. And we have to deal with people who might be going in and out of that field because they're working in a real working environment in a warehouse trying to get their jobs done. How can I get started with robots? There's a lot of different avenues to get into robotics. People come from a lot of different backgrounds, whether that's mechanical, electrical, software, or anything else that's not even engineering. There's a lot of different ways to get involved in the engineering side. These days, there's a lot of low-cost kits available so that you can get some hands-on experience, and they're really geared towards younger people to get that, that experience. Um, one of the ways that I got in was joining a local robotics team. There's a lot of different teams and organizations that do competitions or just allow you to get that experience. What's the coolest part about working on robots? Hmm, there's so many cool things about working on robots here. Uh, one of the most rewarding things that I've gotten to experience is watching our customers use it for the first time. There's so much delight in their eyes when they see it pick that first box right after they press the button and I think it's just one of the coolest things. It feels like you're really working on something that's coming out of the future. 